Okay, here's part three on square roots. We'll be multiplying square roots, and square roots are also called radicals, so here's a new term for us, radicals. That's what square roots are, radicals. Okay, so um, let's review. Let's say we had square root of 48. Square root of 48. So just reviewing the square root of 48, we know that it's between two numbers. It's between two perfect squares. Square root of 6 and the square root of 49. And that's 7. So it's between 6 and 7. And as we can see, it is very close to the square root of 49. So we can guess. We can probably say, well, it may be about approximately 6 point, let's say, 9. And if we did 6.9 squared, we would get 47.61. And 47.61 is pretty close to 48, but can it be closer? In the last video, we did multiplying with, by the tenth. So let's, let's go even further. Let's see what we can do. Okay, so here we multiplied by the tenth place, 6.9. We did 6.9 squared. 6.9 squared is 47.61. But we can even multiply to the, in the hundredth place. So let's try something like We're trying to get the 48 very close to 48 and we already said that six about 6.9 squared we know 6.9 squared is 47.61 so can we get any closer so what if we did 6.9 let's say 6.94 what if we did 6.94 squared that's to the hundredth place now if we did 6.94 squared again it's 6.94 times 6.94 we'll get 48.1 so that's that's over but what if we did 6.93 we'll get 48.02 so 6.93 is very close to the square root of 48 in fact if we needed to do a me let's say we needed to do a measurement uh, we would say that this is 6.93 is the square root of 48 I mean it's off by two hundredth of a point. Now if we did 6.92 squared, you can do that on your calculator, you'll, you'll get 47.88. So that's really the closest without going over. But 6.93 squared is very, a very good answer. And you can even go to the thousands place, but we're, we won't do that in this class. And if you wanted to do 6.9201 or so forth. But that's just a review on how we can get the square root by using the tenth or the hundredth place. Now we can also multiply square roots, and again, we call them radicals. Square roots are radicals. So if I gave you this on a test and say, what, what is that? That's a square root sign. What else is it called? Well, it's the radical sign. It's the radical sign. Okay? Don't forget the dot. Now... Let's say we have the square root of 48, and we wanted to break this down. We wanted to get an answer on what it was. Of course, we just said that it's about it's about 6.93. Right? We can even say it's about 6.9. But we can also break this down like we making a factor tree. In this case, we'll make a radical tree. We'll break it down into radicals. You can do that also. You can say that the square root of 48, and just think of numbers that multiply to 48, and that we're not making factors of it. We can say the square root, square, not grapefruit, the square root of 16 times the square root of 3 gives us the square root of 48. So see how we're breaking it down? So now we're left with this. Now, the, we can still break this down. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 3, we can't break down. It's not a perfect square. So the final answer would be this. You would just write it like that. 4 squared or 3. Now, why did I say 4? Because the square root of 16 is 4. So in this case, the 4 broke free of the radical sign, but the 3 can't. Okay, let's do another one. What about the square root of 108? So what, see if you can do that one on your own for a minute. 
square root of 108. Okay, so we'll make our tree, or we'll call it a radical tree. So we know now we can see some numbers. The so square root of 12 times the square root of 9. That works. And can we break down anything else? Yes, we can break the square root of 9 down. So the square root of 9 could be 3. The square root of 9 is 3. And we get 3 square root of 12. But we're not actually done yet. Even though we can't break the 12 down we can into a perfect square, we can still do more for it. So let me just bring this up. The square root of 12 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And we can break the 4 down, but not the 3. If we break the 4 down, we get a 2. But remember, we already had a 3 that was free. Say that a couple times. A 3 that was free. So we can multiply these two. And your final answer would be 6 square root of 3. That would be your final answer. So I'll do that again So for you. Let me just do that again. Erase this. Do it again. The square root of 8. Okay. Square root of 8. So we know that it's the square root of 12 times the square root of 9. And we already said that the 9... Square root of 9 is 3, so we had that part. So far we had this. Put a line. But we know we can go further because the square root of 12 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And we have a 3. That's free already. Don't forget that. We need that. We'll just, make sure, just put an arrow saying we need to use it. And the square root of 3, we can't do anything with it, but the square root of 4 is 2. And so you have the 2 and the 3, so 3 times 2 is 6, and our final answer will be 6, square root of 3. Okay, let's do one more. So what if I had the square root of, we'll just say 18? Can we do this one? Square root of 18, what do we have? Well, we have the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 9 we know is 3, and there's our answer. So that's how we can multiply square roots. So if I ever give you on a test, the square root of 5 times the square root of, of 6, well, we know it's the square root of 30. Right? That's what it equals. And But we can actually simplify this, because we know the square root of 6 is what? What else is the square root of, th of 6? So let's put it there. We know that's the square root of 30. The square root of 6, can we break it down any further? No. Well, we can leave it like that, but we don't have anything to be free with. Right? There's no perfect square. So this leaves us... This is actually the same thing if we just did 5 and 6. Great job.